Welcome back. This video is the second of our two-part series on WAC, the Weighted Average Cost of Capital. In part one, we learned about what WAC is, how it can be used, and how we can calculate the weights for each component of a firm's capital structure. Now it's time to learn how to calculate the cost of each of the components. Throughout this video, keep in mind that the cost of capital to the company equals the return required by its debt and equity investors. These two terms are often used interchangeably, depending on whether you take on the perspective of the company or the investors, but both get at the same concept, the R in the WAC formula. First is the cost of debt. There are two ways of estimating the cost of debt. One is using the yield to maturity approach, and the other is using the debt rating approach. Recall that the yield to maturity is the measure of the return on a bond, assuming that it is held until maturity. This tells us the return that bondholders require to hold this debt until maturity, which is the same as telling us the cost of the firm for owing the bondholder. An effective way of estimating the cost of debt of a firm is to look at the YTM of the bonds that the company issues. Of course, YTM differs according to the term of the bond, so if possible, choose a bond with a term length or maturity that matches the timing of the project that you are applying WAC to. The other approach is the debt rating approach. This method is used when information on the company's bonds is not available or not applicable. In this case, we would find a comparable company that has the same credit rating as a company we are looking at. There are many credit rating agencies out there, such as Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch Group, who score a company's bonds to tell us how risky the firm's debt is. We use the YTM of that company's bond with a similar term to maturity as our desired project to estimate the cost of debt. When using this method, some adjustments might have to be made to the cost of debt to account for differences between the companies. The idea is that if we can find information on debt that looks similar to the debt of the firm we are interested in, then the cost to borrow this debt should be similar. Next is the cost of preferred stock. Companies usually promise preferred stock owners that they will pay a fixed dividend every year for an unlimited amount of time. This fixed payment can be expressed as a dollar amount or as a percentage of the book value of the preferred share. Because the dividends are promised and have no maturity date, we can use the perpetuity formula to calculate the cost of preferred stock. Recall that the perpetuity formula is PV equals D over RP, where D represents the fixed dividend and RP represents the appropriate discount rate for the preferred share. Notice that this is the same RP that we want to use in our WAC formula. While RP is the rate of return for the preferred shareholder, it represents how much it costs the firm to issue these preferred shares to the preferred shareholders. We can rearrange this formula into RP equals D over PV, where D is a dividend given per year and the PV is the current market value of the preferred stock, which can be found on the stock market. Let's try a problem together. Note that here, you are given Vancouver's capital structure in the form of a debt-to-equity ratio. However, on an exam, you may be asked to find the values of debt and equity yourself, where debt is the present value of the firm's bonds or loans, and equity is the market price of the firm's common shares. Pause this video and try this question yourself. When you are ready, resume the video and we will go over the answer together. The formula for calculating the cost of preferred stock is RP equals D over PV. D is unknown, so we must first solve for the dividends. The company has 1 million shares that has a book value of 100 million, so each share has a book value of 100. 8% dividends for a $100 share is $8. Plug this into the formula, RP equals 8 over 120, which gives us 6.67% for the cost of preferred stock. Notice that for the present value, we use the current market value of the stocks, because this is how much the shares are worth based on the future expected dividends of the preferred shares, as valued by the stock market. Finally, we must calculate the cost of equity. The main way to calculate the cost of equity is using the Capital Asset Pricing Model, CAPM, or in other words, the SML approach. You should know how to use CAPM to calculate an investor's return on equity. Recall the CAPM formula, RE equals RF plus beta times RM minus RF. Like with the preferred shares, the return on equity for stockholders is also the cost of equity to the company. Let's do a question together to refresh your memory.
Let's check back in with our neighborhood shop, Vancouver. Pause this video and try this question yourself. When you are ready, resume the video and we will go over the answer together. All the numbers have been given to us, so we can simply plug the numbers in. Here, we have that RE equals 2% plus 1.2 times 8% minus 2%, which equals 9.2%. Now that you've learned all the components to calculating WAC, let's revisit Vancouver with a comprehensive question. This is likely what would appear as a long question on an exam. Pause this video and try this question yourself. When you are ready, resume the video and we will go over the answer together. Let's go over the answer. Firstly, we can see right away that Vancouver doesn't have any preferred shares, so we can just ignore that component of WAC. Next, let's try to find the weights of debt and equity. This company has a debt to equity ratio of 0.7. As we learned in part 8 of this video, we can use the debt to equity ratio approach to determine the company's capital structure. We first assume that equity is 1 and debt is 0.7. Add them up to get that the value of total assets V is 1.7. For the weight of debt, we find the ratio of debt to value, which is 0.7 over 1.7, which equals 41.18%, and the weight of equity is 1 over 1.7, which equals 58.82%. Always double check your calculations by making sure your weights add up to 100%. It's add up to 100%. Now that we have the weights, the next step is to calculate the cost of debt and cost of equity. The cost of debt is given to you at 6.5%. Applying the cap M formula, the cost of equity is 8.8%. Finally, we will plug our numbers into the WAC formula. The resulting WAC should be 7.85%. Thus, this is the appropriate discount rate for this firm that reflects the overall riskiness of how the firm is financed. In the last two videos, we learned about WAC, what it is, and how to use it. We discussed the specific components in more detail and identified how to calculate the individual weights and the cost of capital. After doing some wacky calculations, I hope that you have a better understanding of WAC. Until next time. Thank you.